Not the way I practice it, in a rather lackadaisical fashion I must confess. But Buddhism is broad in its practice. Living in China as I do, I'd say faith plays a big role for the laity. I doubt going to the temple, bowing three times, lighting an incense stick, and asking for a new car is based much on reason. However, when studying Buddhism people tend to move away from the surface flimflam. Even some of the more esoteric assertions may find their grounding in reality. Reincarnation, for example. If we are the product in part of our environment, and our environment changes, as it does, constantly then what we are changes. We, die, and are, reborn, moment by moment. The goal of Buddhism is to end this cycle of birth and rebirth by allowing things to flow through the practitioner instead of conditioning him or her. This is certainly the interpretation of birth and rebirth accepted by many Buddhist scholars. One of the most telling stories I heard about, faith, in Buddhism pertained, if I remember correctly, to Tibetan Buddhism. In walks the young monk, fresh out of the laity, waiting for all the bangs and whistles and wondrous happenings, and he's told to sit down and imagine the Buddha, there under a tree covered in jewels, animals playing all around him, the sound of lutes, the sun shining, minimal air pollution and all the rest of it, and the young monk is told, think of him constantly. Give him all your troubles. Off wanders our young monk happily and he does just that for months, years, even decades until it's decided he's ready, then he's called in again. He is asked if his practice is working? Do his problems go away? Oh yes, yes, most certainly, it's wonderful. So, the monk is told, remember when we first sat here and I told you to do this? Well, we just made it up, didn't we? Think about it, it's all rubbish. At this point the monk's world collapses, he goes off, and has a nervous breakdown. Then, before things can go too far and he takes to jumping off stupus or banging the milkmaids, he's called in again and reminded, but it worked, didn't it? The only faith you need is in trying and practicing the teaching. You can doubt many things but keep practicing, for myself, I believe in Buddhism if we cultivate understanding and wisdom then faith follow. After actual practicing I found Buddha's teaching true to its words and have full faith that it can lead to what he promise. You can actually experience and sense it. As born Buddhist previously, I do ingrain the teaching and thought yes it does not conflict with science or modern principles. The words are wise but at that time don't really have faith and think getting enlightened rid of suffering as a concept. It is only a word, I prefer to call myself more of free believer Buddhist. Fortunately I have get the chance to start practicing, afterward I have full faith that we all can reach the state, it is a matter of your own will. So what I am trying to say is that unlike some other teaching, we need to first try it to experience it ourselves to have understandings to faith follows automatically, unshakable one on that matter. It is like people told you lime lemon is salty not sour, you would not believe it no matter what as you ever taste it. You have full faith not because many people told you, it is written in a book, or wise men told you so. You just know it is true or not from experience. Some of the teaching I have doubt about it, so after you advance, you come to an understanding however the important things is that we cultivate, barami, to rid of our suffering, the root suffering. So no need to have full faith in all the words, but have faith in giving it a try and keep walking the path. Faith is not an issue in meditation, and the practice can have real and lasting benefits. Where faith is a necessary component is where a believer accepts a master's assertion that there is some cosmic clearinghouse where the Itali is kept on all out actions, positive and negative, and good or bad karma is doled out based on our actions. It takes faith to believe that we are dualistic beings with a illusory physical body but a real and eternal, soul, which cannot be detected or falsified but which survives death and either comes back controlling a life form based on our last life. There is no evidence that anything in a human being survives death, or that any cosmic clearinghouse keeps track of our wrongs, and punishes us with a lower reincarnated life, or tallies up our good deeds and rewards us with a subsequent life on a higher level. Buddhism has numerous schools of belief, and within each there are a range of individual beliefs. It's quite probable that there are devout Buddhists here who don't fit any of the above commentary. What I've written is not intended as a one-size-fits-all summary of all Buddhist beliefs, but a review of where many rely on faith where evidence fails them, 